So OpenAI just dropped its newest model, OpenAI01. And let me tell you folks, it's got everyone talking. Now sit back, relax, and watch the whole video because I'm going to break down how OpenAI is made and structured. Uh, talk a bit about some of the practical uses you can try out, go over a few pros and cons, discuss some of the criticism it has received, and more. Now, what makes O1 so different from its predecessor? Well, it's all about this concept of slowing down to speed up. Now, I know, I know, it sounds a little counterintuitive, but stick with me. OpenAI01 has been designed to think more deeply before giving an answer, but like how a human would approach a complex problem. They've trained it to act more like a PhD student, solving tricky questions in fields like physics, chemistry, and even math. In fact, it scored an astonishing 83% in the International Mathematics Olympiad, completely outshining GPT-40, which only managed a 13%. Now here's where things get really fascinating. OpenAI 01 isn't just book smart, because basically it's designed to tackle problems in a way that closely mirrors human reasoning. Previous models like GPT-40 were great at generating responses, but they kind of hit a wall when it came to deep step-by-step -step thinking. They give answers, sure, but they couldn't really think out loud or adapt their approach to more complex, multi-step problems. And that's the gap that O1 is looking to breach. In light of this, OpenAI decided to teach O1 to slow down and actually think things through before responding. It's like having an AI that's not just rattling off facts, but is instead sitting down with a cup of coffee, scratching its head, rubbing its chin, and figuring out the best approach to solve a problem. So that's fine and well, but how does this work? Well, O1 uses a process called reinforcement learning with a chain of thought, COT, framework. Imagine you're trying to solve a tricky math problem. You break it down into smaller steps, tackle each one, and then connect the dots to find the answer. That's basically what O1 is doing because it considers multiple steps and strategies and refines its answers until it gets it right. This level of reasoning is game-changing because it means O1 can handle tasks that require more than just recalling facts. It can actually think its way to a solution. Now, important note, remember folks, OpenAI01 has a unique approach when it comes to prompting. Unlike previous models like GPT-40, it is already built to use chain of thought, COT reasoning, internally, which means it processes problems step by step in the background before giving an answer. And so because of this, using traditional prompting techniques like explicitly guiding the model to think step by step is not only unnecessary, but can actually degrade its performance. So guys, to get the best results with O1, keep prompts simple and direct. For instance, instead of saying, think step by step and explain how to calculate the square root of 16, you should just ask, what is the square root of 16? The model will internally handle the complex reasoning without additional guidance. Basically, overcomplicating the prompt can confuse O1 and lead to less effective responses. Anyway, folks, let's talk about coding for a second. A few weeks ago, I showed you how users on X demonstrated creating a video game with OpenAI01 in just a few minutes using a few simple prompts. And the results, all things considered, are really impressive. You know how tricky it can be to build because it works through each step methodically. So it's almost like having a highly skilled coder sitting next to you. Now, while OpenAI01 is showing some impressive abilities, it's not without its critics. Some experts in the AI community are pointing out that O1 isn't the revolutionary leap many were hoping for. You see, this model is designed to spend more time thinking before it responds, which is both its strength and its weakness. And so while it means a one can solve complex problems more accurately, it also means it is slower. In some cases, it takes several minutes to provide an answer, especially when dealing with multi-step reasoning. And you know, this slowing down approach is great for accuracy, but it might not suit every use case, especially those requiring quick responses. Another point of contention is its transparency or 
should I say rather lack of it. OpenAI hasn't made the chain of thought tokens available to users, so we don't get to see exactly how O1 arrives at its conclusions. This makes it harder to fully understand or trust the reasoning process behind its answers, and even OpenAI CEO Sam Altman had some mixed feelings. In his own words, he acknowledged that while O1 is their most capable model yet, it's still flawed, still limited, and may seem less impressive the more you use it. Now, let's talk about some of the limitations and missing features of OpenAI one because folks, it's not all smooth sailing. First off, as I mentioned before, one of the most glaring issues is its speed. Sure, O1's approach to slowing down and thinking through problems gives it an edge in accuracy, but it also means that it can be painfully slow in some cases. We're talking about several minutes to respond, especially when dealing with complex multi-step reasoning. So if you're looking for a quick, snappy answer, O1 might not be the best fit because it's built for deep thinking. But that comes at the cost of speed. And let's not forget some of the basic features you might expect from a cutting-edge AI model. Because right now, O1 lacks functionalities like browsing the web for up-to-date information and uploading files or images for analysis. And you know, these were key features that made previous models like GPT-40 so versatile. Without those capabilities, I guess O1 feels somewhat limited in its use case. Then there's the issue of transparency, or as I said, lack thereof. OpenAI hasn't made the chain of thought COT tokens accessible to users, so we can't really see the steps that O1 goes through to arrive to its conclusions. And this raises a lot of questions about trust. I mean, how can we fully rely on O1's reasoning if we can't trace its thought process? It's like getting an answer from a math genius but not being able to see their calculations. I think this lack of transparency makes it harder to validate its responses, especially when used in critical fields like healthcare or scientific research. Now folks, let's see how you can actually get your hands on OpenAI01 because unlike previous models, access is a bit different this time around. OpenAI is offering O1 through ChatGPT Plus and Teams accounts. If you're a subscriber, you can choose between two versions, O1 Preview and O1 Mini. The O1 Preview is the main model, offering the full depth of its reasoning capabilities. On the other hand, O1 Mini is designed to be faster and better suited for simpler, everyday tasks. For example, folks, if you want to quickly get some help with figuring out uh, the best way to budget your monthly expenses or need advice on planning a workout routine, O1 Mini can provide you with useful and straightforward suggestions. It's optimized for these quick and practical questions where you want an answer fast, making it a cost-effective option without sacrificing too much in terms of accuracy. The interesting part here is that OpenAI is really taking a slow and cautious approach with this release because they're providing these early previews to gather user feedback, uh, refine the models, and explore how O1's unique thinking process can be applied across different fields. It's almost like a trial run, allowing OpenAI to test the waters and see what works and what needs improvement and... I guess this cautious rollout might actually work in their favor and help them fine-tune the model before a more widespread release. That all being said, folks, I personally think OpenAI 1 is, well, shall we put it as unique. It's definitely a completely different approach from how we've been using chatbots over the past two years, but I think it's worth giving a shot. You know what they say in this case, the only limit is your imagination as we saw with the user who created a video game in just a few minutes using a few O1 prompts. So we'll see what happens. Hey, let me know in the comments if you have any other questions, if you're already using OpenAI01, and if you like it or not. Subscribe to the channel and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. It would be a huge support. See you in the next one, folks. You all take care.